Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Anime Podcast channel. My name is Benji, and today, the debate might really be over after this chapter. The Yonkos are over the Admirals. And I'm simply saying that because of this man right here, Shanks himself, he's the hockey man. He's, he's the hockey man. Because, not gonna lie, this is only the tip of the iceberg for what Shanks is truly capable of. But not only that, there's also other evidence within this chapter as well as why I have the Yonkos over the Admirals. But we'll get to that very, very soon. But we just don't get that. We also get some very, very compelling information that revolves not only the Void Century, but also the true state of the land of Wano. And most importantly, the ancient weapon, Pluton. But before we go ahead with the rest of the video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Me and my friends Nick, Taj, and Phil make weekly podcast episodes on all of your favorite anime and manga series. And go ahead and join the Discord because after every single chapter that comes out, we will be discussing there. So go ahead and join our Discord. And speaking of Discord, I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to my boy Ria Nusuke's voices on our Discord for making this very, very incredible fan art that he made right here. I'll show it in the video. And brother, you are amazing. Thank you so much for this fan art. This was really super dope. We've never gotten anything like this on the podcast, so I really appreciate it. Big shout out to my boy Ria Nusuke's voices on Discord. But with all the formalities out of the way, let's go ahead and begin this chapter review. Chapter 1055 of One Piece, New Age. So to start, we actually get a pretty swaggy page that is solely directed towards the One Piece film Red movie coming out this October uh, in Japan. And basically, it's of Ulti, uh, who seems to be the female lead within this movie, and is Shanks' daughter. But basically, she remembers something and starts writing music. Now, it's not that deep, but I will say this. The music that I've heard so far from this film seems to be incredible. Trust me, I'll be bumping some of this on my Spotify. But moving on truly to the beginning of the chapter, we see that the celebration with Wano is still ongoing. And we actually continue where we left off last chapter between the battle between the Scabbards and Momo versus Green Bull. And if you also remember from last chapter, Momo would distinctly given Yamato orders to not to interfere in this battle. And we later in this chapter discover why. But out of nowhere, it seems that Green Bull attacks Momonosuke with his branches. And I also want to mention that Green Bull currently is in his tree-like zone form. Uh, and like I said, I don't know really the distinction between his zone monstrous tree form or I know that he has a Logia, but uh, I don't know. Like I said, hopefully Oda explains that a little bit later on. Now, while Momo is down, Raizo the ninja actually comes in to try to attempt an attack on Green Bull, and it's a fire attack. And he actually does some damage. <laughs> nah, I'm capping, I'm capping. But Green Bull basically says, oh, I'm hurt, but he's obviously like kidding. And then he immediately stabs Raizo with one of his branches and zaps all of the nutrients out of his system. Oh, that's very weird to say. Now later, Green Bull proceeds to attack every single member of the Scabbards who are within this battle, and it seems like the Scabbards are unable to find out any kind of weakness that Green Bull will have. But we move on to the bottom level of the castle underneath Wano, which belongs to Kazuki Sukiyaki. I said it right, let's go. Let's go! Now, if you do remember from last chapter, it was actually revealed that Pluton lays dormant within the bottom of Wano. And this chapter itself elaborates a lot more on that situation. While heading further down the castle's basement, Trafalgar Gold Law comes out of nowhere to accompany not only Kazuki, but also Robin. Now, really quick side note, I want to just go ahead and say this. Robin and Law will make a perfect ship, a perfect couple, my guys. Ah, man, I really do hope they get together. But that's just my opinion. But let's move on. So Sukiyaki explains that the piney glyph that lays dormant within the castle's basement was found not because of his guidance, 
but because Jack from Kaido's crew was actually able to go underwater. And I did not know this, but Jack is a fishman. When was this confirmed? This is crazy information. I don't know why I'm just, you know, putting two to two together. Uh, I probably should have known because Zunisha probably smashed their ship and then he was able to breathe at least. Probably not able to swim, but at least able to breathe. But um, I don't know. That's very interesting. So Robin, who is slightly confused of the fact that how does being a fishman correlate to finding this bottom pond glyph? And you'll see why very soon. But later on, Law actually asks how far do these stairs actually go down? And Sukiyaki simply replies this, a few hundred years deep. They continue to walk and a small dim of light comes from the stairwell in which they're walking. And Law and Robin make a major discovery. What is currently Wano now is only a small fragment of the entirety of Wano. And the rest of Wano is actually submerged underwater. Sukiyaki actually explains this and he says this. This is what I do know. Long ago, Wano was much larger and located at sea level, on the land around the base of Mount Fuji. At some point, walls were erected all around enclosing the island. As a result, the rainwater had no place to escape, and whole towns were eventually submerged in water. The land further up mountain was established for settlers, and that grew into the country we are familiar with today, the current Wano. And it is stated that the older Wano is over 800 years old. Now, this is very interesting because if you look at the timelines between the Void Century and Wano actually erecting these walls in order to basically close its borders, they very much correlate. We soon see the third Poneglyph, and Robin explains that one more is needed for them to reach their destination, Laftail. Sukiyaki later discussed that Pluton, and how he has never seen it himself, yet if Wano were to ever open its borders, the ancient weapon Pluton would also emerge with it. So with this being the question, and this is actually asked within the chapter, why did Odin want to open Wano's borders? And this kind of takes me back to my theory that I feel like the ancient weapons are a strong component to the One Piece, and not only that, but also Luffy's Devil Fruit. And this whole portion of the chapter, there's a lot to unpack with so many questions and theories that kind of arise with everything that's happening. But the major one is this. Why did Odin want to open Wano's borders? Especially if he knew that Pluton was sitting on the abyss of Wano. Now, don't get me wrong. I do feel like Odin did have a plan for what was going to happen once the, the entirety of Wano was able to come to the sea level or surface level. But also you have to look at Momo kind of realizing within the, the notes within Odin's journal that at some point in time that this, this ancient weapon is going to come into play during the final battle or a little bit later on due to prophecy. Now, how this is all going to play out, I definitely have no idea, but I'm very interested to see and hopefully we can get part vision to make a video on that. But cutting back, we cut back to the fight between Momo and Green Bull. And basically, Green Bull is reiterating that if Kaido was still in rule, he wouldn't even be trying to fight these guys. And, you know, even with Green Bull actually saying this, I'm not gonna lie, I had a completely different uh, perception of Green Bull before we actually started reading. I had no idea he was gonna be so short-tempered and kind of irrational. But, uh, I mean, I I'm not saying I dislike his character, it's just like I had no idea he was gonna be this kind of admiral. But Green Bull also says this. I'm sure living under his reign was miserable, but the order he imposed was the deterrent that kept other predators from attacking your country. Just bring me Straw Hat Luffy already. I'll leave you after I take his head. And he says this while he's still attacking the scabbards. And Yamato actually brings to mind that maybe they need to call Luffy and the Straw Hats in order to get some help. But Momo stops her and lets it be known that murdering Luffy and the Straw Hats would do nothing but hamper the progress of Wano. The country must be able to stand on its own two feet. And I quote Momo, and we still have to depend on people who wish to leave. How can we look at any of you in the eyes and say that Wano is safe with us? Hey, Momo is really living up to that Shogun name, and I absolutely love it. I really do love Momo's character. So Green Bull looks in disapproval of this quote by Momo, but later on, out of nowhere, Momo is actually able to miraculously, 
um, basically recreate the blast breath that he reminisces from Kaido. And this is pretty fucking awesome. Everyone is in shock, but my boy Momo has finally pulled it off. And if you really think about it, this is a Yonko level attack. So you gotta really give credit to Momo. Now, after a while, Momo actually gets kind of carried away and blasts Green Bull with yet another blast breath. And extremely lucky, Green Bull is able to escape. And he basically turns into a little seed and plants himself into a whole new body, which I'm not gonna lie, is pretty dope. So Green Bull then reemerges and he's looking like he wants to take things a little bit more seriously. But in the foreground, we see Black Lightning. I'm pretty sure you know what Black Lightning means. And if you remember from last chapter, who is coming to Wano, you know who is exactly responsible for this Black Lightning. This lightning leaves Fraud Bull, <coughs> my bad, a Green Bull paralyzed. We later see a panel of a particular ship and one of his patrons saying this. Boss, don't use your hockey without warning. All the newbies are foaming at the mouth. And then we see this particular silhouette saying this. I won't call you Marines cowardly or underhanded for this, but wouldn't you agree it's bad to go after those worn out saplings when they're exhausted from making pirate history? We then go into a plethora of flashbacks of this particular individual making some kind of appearance within certain individuals' lives. And then we see this fire, this fire panel of shanks saying this. Does the new age frighten you that much? So Green Bull immediately retreats, and I'm not gonna lie, I, you know, I'm very cautious about giving the title to fraud to uh, several people within One Piece. But it's looking like Green Bull could be the first fraudulent admiral that we see in the series, because this introduction did not do him any justice. But I digress. But on the other hand, this just shows how much of a dog my boy Shanks is. I don't think we've seen a display of hockey this formidable at all since Kaido. And I'm gonna be honest, it looking like the combination between Kaido and his devil fruit was the thing that made Kaido so fearsome. Shanks alone is a hockey man. That's all he got. And he's the strongest at it. So um, right now I'm really thinking that Shanks is the strongest character in the series. And the fact that this is actually in a way akin to Roger and Roger only being able to conquer, to use Conqueror's hockey and not even have a devil fruit, I really think that Shanks is on that level. Not necessarily to, on the same level as Roger, obviously, but definitely right below him. But I will say this, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am to see Shanks finally in battle during One Piece. It's going to be something that we've never seen before. I want to see how he utilizes his attacks, how strong is his conquerors. It's going to be crazy. But later on, we see that Yamato actually kind of celebrates Momo's victory. And the celebration within Wano continues. But we do see a panel of my boy Jinbei, Sanji, Zoro, and Luffy. And they're all basically sitting down. And the whole time, it is realized that they were watching Green Bull take on Momo. And I believe in a way that this is a signal for Momo, basically like Luffy and trust in Momo that he will be able to protect Wano from here on out. They won't have to do anything else. And I love the way that this is kind of done because it's basically like, okay, well, I know Momo is going like, to be able to you know, take on this tough opponent and still come out victorious. He will be able to be a great Shogun and basically be able to protect Wano. And honestly, I think this panel itself is kind of one of my favorite panels of Wano itself, cause I don't know man, like just the fact of just seeing the, the monster trio and my boy Jinbei just sitting down, just chilling, being like, oh, y'all see this fight? This shit kinda, this shit kinda dope. I mean, you know, Momo, Momo out here shooting blast breaths or whatever. But we finally end the chapter with this panel with Luffy. So Luffy says this, a familiar face just popped up in my head. And that is the end of the chapter, and it's looking like either Shanks is passing through Wano or he's going around Wano, the way that they kind of describe it in that last little excerpt on the last panel. Um, but I do want to see what happens next chapter. I'm super, super excited to see what happens. But the thing that really interested me this chapter was the things that were confirmed for me in this chapter. 
for one. Yonkos over Admirals is not really even close at this point, to be honest, after this chapter, but you know, I digress. Next, it looks like Yamato is confirmed to be a straw hat in this chapter as well. Then another one, Shanks may very well be the strongest character currently that we know in One Piece. But along with all the additional amount of lore that we got with Pluton, the Void Sentry, uh, you know, the older Wano, I believe that Oda is simply scratching the surface for what is to come in the future, in these future chapters, man. I'm super hype, I'm super hype. And I wanna see when does the Wano arc uh, truly end. I believe we maybe, we hopefully we get like two more chapters, especially with hopefully the discovery of the Pontyglyph and things like that. So two more chapters of Wano and then we move on to, I hope, is Elbaf. But with that being said, but that's it for the chapter review with that being said thank you so much for tuning in let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about my boy shanks is he the strongest character in one piece and is green bull a fraud or not let me know let me know because it's looking like he may very well be a fraud but also uh go ahead and like comment and subscribe to the channel and also one more thing to my discord uh people you know uh fuji tour is stronger than green bull stop it Stop it. There's no debate. Come on, man. Come on. You know? But with that being said, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you guys in the next one.